So I've got an afternoon at home today. I've just been down the allotment in the morning and I'm making granola this afternoon. And in between the stages, I thought I'd just pop out here and just quickly shoot you uh, a quick garden tour. We've actually had some rain, which is really exciting. And this is the first non-rainy day and it's absolutely stunning. So uh, let's have a quick whiz round and see what we're up to. So here's a quick look from where I'm sitting at the moment. And you can see the potatoes are looking a bit scrappy. I'll talk a bit more about those later, but basically it's a combination of a kind of blight. It's not late blight, but a different one that seems to affect the sarfamiras. And some of them I've even had to harvest, but I've been quite pleased because the harvest has been good. A good mix of large and medium sized potatoes. And the rest of the beds in the garden are rapidly transitioning to winter crops. There's still a few salad beds here, but they'll rapidly be replaced by salad beds at the allotment. And everything else will be mainly things like brassicas and miner's lettuce and salad rocket and things like that. So let's take a look around in more detail. This is my little tomato corner. And these are tumblers. I've been very pleased with these. I did a separate video about how these are my favorite tomatoes and they actually make my top 10 list of if I were to only grow 10 veggies what would I grow these cordon tomatoes crimson crush have got a bit bashed up in the wind you can see some of them just like bent over there but I'm not really worried about it they're fine and little apple tree here and these are some of my seedlings so I've got my late leeks uh, spring onions at the back there tough ball which are an overwintering onion to harvest June July and some brassicas here with of course a cabbage white butterfly spring onion not spring onion salad rocket and spinach more spinach and the first batch of lettuce to go on the allotment as I said in a couple of weeks time they'll be ready to go and then these are some potatoes, swift I think, where I did an experiment to see whether I could break dormancy so I could get them planted again now so I could grow my own seed potatoes and they seem to have worked. The Aaron Pilot haven't come up at all but the swift have all come up so since swift is the one that I want to grow earliest next year it's quite nice that I get my own seed potatoes so I can get them all ready and chitted. Um, long before I can get them from the shops. So let's have a look at these potatoes. So just look how scrappy these are. So these are sarfamira, which I've normally harvest September, October, but they really suffered. And they do have this kind of blight on them. Never gets down to the tubers. So I don't really worry about it at all. Just leave the potatoes for as long as I can. But these look, just look at the amount of dye back on these. And again, these are Sarfamira. And uh, so they're not looking good. They're, they're really scrappy and horrible looking. So I will harvest them probably sometime in the next two or three weeks. Well, I'll take the tops off and I'll just leave them in the compost and harvest them as I need them from the compost. So all my peas have gone by this little batch here of alderman. So this was all peas here. And there's just a few left up here. But uh, next week, I think I'll clear this because that's again looking a bit too scrappy for a back garden. I've got some golden beetroot here. A few of them have gone to seed. This is kind of what you normally expect when you've had a lot of really hot weather. Even though these have been really well watered, it's just been too hot. So here I've got some Romanesco cauliflowers. And I've got a lot of whitefly, a huge amount of whitefly. Let me show you underneath one leaf. Actually, <laughs> of course, I picked one of the better ones. Some of them are a bit worse than that. I've sprayed them with neem oil and uh, soapy water but it's not enough to uh, keep them under control. I don't tend to 
over worry about things like this though. You know, white fly doesn't seem to cause too much of a problem. It's more of an issue on the kales, and the kales do have it, but it um, won't be harvesting those kales for quite a long time. So there's plenty of time for the white fly population to be brought under control. I've got some more golden beetroot, and this is interplanted with chard. So at some point, I'll make a decision whether I'm going to leave both in or whether I'm going to take the chard out and leave the beetroot in or take the beetroot out and leave the chard in. I've got plenty of options there. I might end up leaving everything in and just see how it goes. These cans basically keep the cats and the birds off and they do that because originally they had bird netting on and the cats and the birds have just kind of got used to the fact that when they see these sort of shiny cans it means they shouldn't go on the beds and that's because they couldn't go on the beds because of the bird netting. That's my theory anyway, but it does seem to work, so I stick with it. I've got my French beans. These need harvesting. Some of them are kind of ridiculous. It's only been three days since I harvested these, but anyway, um, you do have to keep on top of them. I've got French beans here, and then we've got runner beans here. And again, the runner beans are just huge. This is just because we've had rain. I really loved it. I've got some lettuces here and they've got spring onions interplanted into them and this is my oldest lettuce bed and it is looking a bit worse for wear now and the red ones are kind of starting to rise a little bit so they'll probably go to seed fairly soon and then this is the last of my mature kind of spring onions North Holland blood red and I'd really like to get this cleared and replanted but because it's the last I've got, um, it's going to be two or three weeks before I eat all these spring onions and they're super sweet. So uh, I'm not rushing it. And then this is the main lettuce bed that we're picking from at the moment. So we don't have a huge amount of lettuce right now. We've got a little bit more in the front garden, but soon we'll be back in abundance. And it's just a transition thing. Um, there's no point putting too much lettuce in at this time of year, it all goes to seed. So it's better just to dip down the volume of harvest just for a few weeks. And then, uh, as I say, we'll be in abundance again by September. So I've got my for earliest of my outdoor carrot beds. And we've been harvesting that for a few weeks now. And this was just basically a whim that I, I planted this. I wasn't expecting to put carrots in here, but I didn't have anything to plant in it that was ready. I thought I'll just bung some carrots in. And I'm so pleased I did because the ones on the allotment that are 1.4 meters high got carrot fly. And all the autumn and winter beds are fine, but this bed is uh, seeing us through summer so it's it's been a real boon having that i've got some collets they're growing well putting on some good growth so we should have some collets starting to form on the stems fairly soon this is my shadiest bed and by about middle of september it's getting very little sun so all the growth needs to happen now in the next month I've got some Brussels sprouts there that I'm growing as a leaf crop. We really love le Brussels sprout leaves, but the mature plants, the leaves are a little bit big and tough. So uh, just got those in just to provide some nice tender leaves. And then lots of kale beds for winter. And we've got more to come. And then we've got parsnips here, and these are interplanted with shallots. The parsnips are doing great, and the shallots are doing great as well. I'm really happy with those. I'm gonna pick some so you can see them. So I just planted my parsnips at the normal density, and then I just bung these shallots in, three to a module, and uh, they've grown into decent size. Slots, so I'm really happy with that. It's just a pure bonus crop. So uh, yeah, can't can't beat a good interplant. Uh, some more beetroot there. 
and again just a few of those going to seed but not too many and the grapevine on the back here needs uh, a bit of a prune and loads of grapes on here and then we've got the berry garden we've got blueberries here I've literally just been munching through all of these and they go all the way along here and we've interplanted with the gooseberries they finish now pretty much finished now but the blueberries have been great apart from this plant here where they've gone and shriveled up a little bit and have been watering them so I don't think it's like a water I don't know maybe there's just too many blueberries on this plant for it to support but uh, yeah it's been pretty prolific I think I'm going to pick these and see if I can make some sort of jam out of them though and I've got my Christmas potatoes in here and basically this is all I'm doing now with my second early so they're all finished and they're all just stacked up in corners just uh, waiting to be harvested whenever we need them and we picked a few of the onions from the front garden and the shallots from the front garden there's some more down here and I think we've got about 500 onions now and that is enough for us and then these are cara i've never grown these before but these seem to be doing much better than the sarpameras and they're also blight resistant but there's just a lot they just look a lot healthier they don't look very healthy but they look healthier than uh, the sarpameras do so i'm quite excited to see what the yield is from those because if the sarpamira yield is good which it is then the yield from these should be excellent. There's some more down the back there. No cherries now on the cherry tree. And the strawberries here have pretty much finished, although we've got some late strawberries still on the allotment. And the raspberries are in the process of finishing. There's still a few handfuls a day of those. They need a bit of a tidy up. We've had some high winds and I haven't got around to repairing the damage and the perennial kales are doing okay i'm thinking of doing a bit of a rearrange around here though i'm thinking of taking these strawberries and putting them down there getting rid of those perennial kales because we've got lots of those scattered around the place and then making this bed into a strawberry bed and then making this bed into a winter cabbage cauliflower calabrese etc well autumn and winter bed it gets just enough sun i think for that purpose and these strawberries are really old now so i think it would be nice to give the bed a change and there's never been strawberries in that bed so i think it might do okay so let's just quickly take a look at the front garden so we've done quite a lot of harvesting from here and replanting so the kales are mostly still doing well there's a couple of them gone to seed and this is where those onions were and the shallots and we just put these kales in and these are a fancy kale they're really pretty um, when they uh, mature and we've got some really nice lettuces down there and more to come at the front and then really pleased with these red cabbages they just wrap around this kind of feature in the centre here hearting up really beautifully and we didn't think we would have space to grow red cabbages this year but by just sort of doing them in this circle they seem to have done really nicely got some more collets there got some chard, some beetroot some more chard underneath the tree as I said the kale so it's looking really nice this garden has been a great success and then finally we've got this little bed just near the front door here which gets no sun hardly any sun anyway uh, but it's just enough for kales so we just squeeze a few in and we try not to harvest this bed very much so that we get nice strong plants for winter 
full on seed sowing mode at the moment. So I've got radish, turnips, pak choy, tatsoi, all sorts of different um, kales, um, but red Brussels sprouts for the leaves, um, calabrese, etc. down there. And then I've got onions and yep, those are mouse traps on there because I have had some mice in here digging up the onion seeds. So uh, I've caught one and uh, hopefully that's it. But if there's any more, I'll catch that one as well. And I've only got two things in here because I've just moved a load of seedlings outside. And these will probably go outside in a couple of days time as well. And then I'll do another batch and on it goes all the way through August and September. So I hope you like that quick video. My name is Steve. This is the Seaside Kitchen Garden and Allotment Channel and I'll see you soon.